we're live and now we're going to record. Okay. Welcome everyone. Make yourself comfortable here. See a lot of familiar faces. Fantastic. Hey, salut René. <laughs> Content de voir plusieurs sessions. Um, hi, Sirk. Hi, everyone. Hope you're getting comfortable here uh, and sharing with us how you're feeling, where you're joining us from. And uh, yeah, I guess you already know by now how this goes. <laughs> so uh, while people are trickling in, I know a session just finished uh, one minute ago. So um, I'm going to start by doing a uh, land acknowledgement. But first, sharing, um, we're going to be sharing a video with you. Uh, so here, let me just see, it's in this one here. Everyone enjoyed the video. Uh, I heard also from a few people here that I know this, the music now plays in their head. I uh, love how beautiful it sounds. But this is, uh, of course, um, much more than an intro. It's uh, something that is very important to know on which land you are, uh, which community were there before you. And we encourage everyone to learn about uh, how you can do the same in your meetings, your webinars, and other events. Um, and for anyone else uh, who is uh, somewhere else in Montreal, we encourage you to take the time and explore the territory uh, you're currently in and learn more about uh, the history of the people that were there first. So thank you so much for listening to me. As of now, I'll let Rosalia take over. Thank you so much, Nayo. Good morning, everybody. If it is, if you are in the Eastern time zone, it is 12. Well, actually, it's not morning here either, is it? It's noon now. Welcome. I am absolutely thrilled for this session. I'm so excited. I hope you've got energy because I know that improv take both takes energy and gives energy. I'm a big fan of improv. I know we're going to have a great time and it certainly opens so many doors for me and it's made me a much better communicator. So I hope you're ready to jump right in. I'm first going to introduce our speaker, Chris Nielsen. I'm going to read his bio so that I don't neglect to mention anything. So Chris Nielsen combines more than 30 years of business and sales experience with his love of improvisational comedy to both entertain and educate global audiences. He is a dynamically powerful yet playful speaker, trainer, change facilitator, coach, and consultant. Leaders and teams at Microsoft, McAfee, Hilton, Federal Reserve Bank, UCSD, Sony, and many more have shared laughs and memorable experiences as Chris masterfully creates engaging environments through games. Audience members walk away with tools to improve cooperation, communication, creativity, collaboration, and leadership in their organizations and also in their lives. So because this is improv, I'm going to invite you to welcome Chris in a way you might not typically, you know, usually we clap or, or we do a thumbs up, but maybe everybody could take their mics off for one second and just do something creative to welcome Chris on the count of three. One, two, three. Welcome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's an honor to be here with you. I, I was afraid. I was really afraid that I might not get here. <laughs> Last night, I arrived in this location at 2 a.m. because a plane got delayed in Chicago. But I'm here and I'm excited to be with you. I was working with some CEOs on, actually, I'll share some of the things I shared with them today with all of you. I want this to be a collaborative experience and also a super safe experience. So most of the things are just volunteer basis. You don't have to play, no pressure. You can sit back and relax if you want to, or I hope more of you do jump in and play. I, I don't wanna put the pressure because I know I'm gonna share a little bit about me and how painful it was at times for me to do some of these games in the beginning and some other painful parts of my speaking. But the more we can collaborate and have fun, the better. And I also um, want as many people that can come on camera as please do that. But I understand you've probably been sharing at, staring at screens. 
for four days. You're a little blurry eyed and a little crazy. So I understand if you can as well. I want to empower all of you right now though. You are now all emperors and empresses. You're now all emperors and empresses, meaning that if you like what you hear, give me a thumbs up or yeah, yeah I agree with that. Yeah, I kind of agree. Thank you for those. If you're not so sure, give me that sideways thumb, you know, the sideways thumb. If you don't like it, ah, I don't think so, Chris. That doesn't seem true to me. And then that's good. There's be some things I'm going to share that you're going to go, oh, I don't think so. And two thumbs up if you love it uh, or want more of it. Thank you. Thank you for that. You know, uh, two thumbs up if you love it. And if you want to cut my head off for some reason, <laughs> give me the two thumbs down. <laughs> give me the two thumbs down. Now, um, raise your hand either digitally or on camera if you like a playful speaker. And I know uh, Josie does definitely. Um, <laughs> Josie, you got your microphone on too, Josie. Um, so yeah, so excellent. Raise your hand if you like a playful speaker. Now come on camera and tell me if you don't like a playful speaker and why. Anyone? Anyone? So I think most of us like a play. Uh, yo, you, <laughs> I can tell by your smile, career fair SCS, <laughs> that you like a playful speaker. You get you 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 can't say you don't. All right, I get most people like a playful speaker, and I'll give you this thing right up front. I used to be a fearful speaker, but one of the things uh, that helped me is playfulness in your speaking erases fear. Playfulness erases fear. I'm going to share with you three compass questions today and remind me if I forget the third. <laughs> questions that point to you towards really important and kind of reprogramming questions for yourself. I'm going to share a recipe that I share with those organizations that Rosalie mentioned and others and very small organizations as well. I shared it yesterday, again, with a group of CEOs and the day before that. I see there's a good quote coming up in the Oh, I, yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> that is a good quote. Someone said, yeah, I like that. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to share a bunch of things. I love your participation. If you have a question, comment that you think adds to this whole group, please include it. If you have something that's going to make me laugh, definitely <laughs> include that. Now, so feel free to take yourself off mute if you have that uh, in, in your head that needs to touch your lips and reach the air. And as we share that, I'm going to share very quickly my journey of uh, fear to fun as a speaker. But before I do that, I'm going to share one of the clues or, or keys for me having fun. And I should get some of the emperors and empresses to give me this. This. So here it is. Am I ready? Here, I want to see the emperor reaction. And if you're in gallery mode and you come on video, you're going to see whether people agree with you or not. I like to be wrong. I like to be wrong. I've seen puzzle fit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. Zita, you even know me a little bit and you still don't think so. Okay. Uh, let's, let's go into it. It's one of the keys to me having fun as a speaker because I hated, I hated to be wrong. Hated it. So I, I would have gone like this. I would have done this too. I hate it. Yeah. And my ego is too fragile too. So I didn't like to be wrong because here's what I figured out though. I didn't have the awareness of why I didn't like to be wrong. So what's the awareness into why I didn't like to be wrong? So have you ever looked on why you don't like to be wrong? Because if I was wrong about something out here, I was wrong in here. Yeah, Zita, I was wrong in here. When I was wrong outside, I was wrong inside. And I didn't know that was a program running in my head. And I started to change that. And what I get is everyone in this room, I believe, is equal in beingness. We may have different skill levels in different areas, but we're equal in beingness. And I don't need to make myself wrong anymore. One of the best things I did for myself, and let me check before I ask the question, how many of you are a little bit hard on yourself by show of hands? A little bit hard on yourself by show of hands. Okay, no, so could just Z and I, that's it. Okay, oh, well, there, okay, there's a couple more people. <laughs> I thought I was in a room full of aliens here. <laughs> Now, normally in a room, 90 plus percent of the room raises their hand in terms of being hard on themselves. So that's what, it, and what I get. And now I want, to, want you to do this as well. Point to the most dangerous person in the Zoom room to you. <laughs> now, yes, I'm going to get you, Zita. I'm coming through the camera and I'm going to get you. <laughs> 
it's you. You are the most dangerous person to you if you didn't point out your head already um, because all the thoughts, someone calls you an idiot and if you repeat it a thousand times in your head, who's the worst person in this situation? Someone calls you something name or is mean to you, you can walk away. Can you get away from yourself? I've tried, but wherever I go, there I am. I'm there wherever I go. So how can improv help me get to where I'm at now? It helped in this recipe too of liking to be wrong because I'm gonna share the recipe in just a minute and it'll show you why I liked it. The other thing I'm super curious and when I'm wrong, I get to learn. In every Zoom room like this, there is a ton of wisdom. This Zoom room is filled with wisdom. If we would collaborate in ways, it would be powerful. There's a ton of wisdom here. All right, now I'm, I'm trying not to stay distracted by the chat, but soon I'll start reading the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start reading in a second. Now, now, my fear to fun journey happened this way. I was programmed by a TV commercial. Never let them see you sweat. Sweat, Rosalie, thank you. And I, I sweat a lot. I'm sweating a little bit right now. I got lights on in here. I'm sweating a little bit right now. Since then, I've done a, a speech called Let Them See You Sweat, so I'm good with it today. Not in the past though, no, definitely not in the past. As a kid hearing that, never let them see sweat, I felt defective and I didn't even know that I felt defective. The commercial and other, some adults piling onto it and some kids piling onto it as well. Now, the good thing is I played a lot of sports. No coach ever said to me, hey, Chris, I want you to go out there, play really hard, but don't sweat. <laughs> No coach ever said that to me, but kids on the other team would go, oh, you take him. He sweats a lot. I don't want to guard him. People on my own team in practice is good. I don't want to guard Chris. He sweats a lot. So I got that feeling. And I was to give a speech in middle school. And I'll remind back before that, just another part of my programming. When I was a kid, my dad was constantly critical of me. Everything I did was not quite good enough. And I always felt not quite good enough. And his voice, I believe, was internalized in my head in middle school when I was running up the stairs between classes, no one around. I was worried someone might see me trip and fall, and I hadn't tripped and fall because I was so worried about being wrong. That's why I hated to be wrong. And now I like to be right because I'm curious. I get to learn. And let's check that question. Um, how many now think I actually like and not First, I also like to be right still. <laughs> <laughs> except when I see it going in the wrong direction towards something horrible. Um, but I, I like to be wrong as well. So how many would flip their thumbs up now and give me a thumbs up for me liking to be wrong? All right. Zeta's still, I like, I love that Zeta's, it's even pointing down a little bit, still questioning me a little bit. Thank you for that. All right. But it was one of the keys to me having fun as a speaker. So let's go back to that speaking journey. In middle school, I was to give a speech. And I was sweating the night before, I was sweating on the way to class, I was sweating as I sat down and I was praying, please don't pick me. And I was shaking when she called me and I was trying to will my hands to stop shaking, but they wouldn't. And all of a sudden I remember trying to read what was in front of me and I poured sweat like I've never poured sweat before. I mean, not in sports, way more. It was like a rain cloud was released from the top of my head and rivulets ran down my face. My face went this pure red. And that moment, I wanted the earth to swallow me up. That moment was so painful, was seared into me like a brand that I would remember forever to this day. Um, and 30 years, it would haunt me like a speaking ghost. Every time I'd get up to speak, I'd go, ha, ha, I'm here. Ha, you're going to sweat again. They're going to see the real defective you. They're going to reject. You're going to fail and they're going to reject you. And that felt like I was at risk every time. And, and going back to that liking to be wrong, when I finally let go of the need to be right, it was like I took a 200 pound backpack off my back. I could let that go. Oh my gosh, I feel so much later now. I can walk out on stage with everyone out judging me and me not constantly judging me. But so I did some crazy things between then, that first speech in middle school to now. So you wouldn't see me sweat. I'm going to just share a few of them. Feel free to laugh. I love when people laugh at it. I can laugh at it today as well. Um, I would buy two shirts exactly the same. And if I had a chance to switch out, I would change. <laughs> you know, if no one saw me change. 
<laughs> you know, but then I pull some out of the bag. Oh my gosh, that's a little wrinkly. Thank you for the smiley face down there, Shirley. Uh, is it Shirley or Shelly? My eyes are going. I think it's Shelly. All right, uh, I'll do this. Something I will never do again. This part I'll do. I, I use it on the back of my neck and that actually helped um, as she's introducing me. But when she was finishing the introduction, I was still sweating and the bottom of it was frozen ice. So it was ice, total ice, almost ice on top. And I took a huge swig. And when I started talking, my tongue was numb and I couldn't quite pronounce the words correctly. And I got all self-conscious and I started to sweat. Anyway, my first improv performance was, which was about 10 or 11 years ago. I, I knew my improv teacher didn't like to turn on the air conditioning. I mean, it was San Diego. It was December, so I was hopeful, but it was 80 degrees that day. At the senior center in Claremont Mesa in San Diego County, I went there and I went prepared with a cooler. <laughs> and in the cooler, I had a couple of things, um, just in case I go, I walked in and oh no, I could feel myself start to, from nervousness and from the heat in the room. I walked up to Jackie who played improv way back in the day with Whoopi Goldberg. I said, Jackie, um, could you please turn on the air? And she said, no, the doors are open. I saw that the doors were open and she wasn't gonna, probably not gonna do it. She didn't do it. So I walked in the bathroom, opened my little igloo cooler. I pulled out one of those flexible ice packs and I put it down my pants. <laughs> it was my test of it. I go, it was exhilarating. It took my mind off sweating for a second, uh, but I thought, oh, they're going to see it in the front of my pants. So I put it in the back of my pants. That also felt really good. Felt really good to have that in there. But then I thought if I perform with it in there and it falls out, oh, that would be bad. So I took it out and I, I let that go. And I did the performance, I sweat, sweated anyways. Um, and then I'll share the last thing I'll share with you is this. I tried on women's panty liners in my armpits, <laughs> in my armpits. And in practice, they worked great. <laughs> you know, they, they worked awesome. Um, uh, none of the sweat came through. I thought I might even have an invention here. Uh, <laughs> I might have an invention with this. I, I felt so good about it. I walked into that speech with a level of confidence that I hadn't had in a while. I felt so confident. And then I started, I could tell I was sweating, but I looked down, no, no big deal. And then I was sweating a lot more. And then I looked down and there was a big, oh no. And another big, oh no. Because there was a dry panty liner island in a lake of sweat. Perfect outline. The dry island, lake, both arms. The rest of the speech, I was like this. And I share that with you so you know where I came from. All this stuff, it wasn't so easy for me. Improv was not easy for me. The, the first day of improv almost became the last day. And I'm going to share that story with you later. Um, now, my curious mind has to check the, the chat, but I'm going to also pull up. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, feel free to come off mute and share them. I'm going to change my background where we're going to share this recipe with you. And before I do that, just a second, connection. That's one of the compass questions I want to share with you today. Connection. And really, it's this way. I ask it this way. Are you connecting or disconnecting? When we're disconnected from someone, they do the bare minimum. They actively sabotage. They look for other situations. When we're connected, they'll go the extra kilometer or 10 kilometers for us, even when we're not looking. So even if you just ask yourself, how can I better connect? The recipe I'm going to share with you today will actually give you hints on how you can better connect in many more powerful ways. Uh, Let's see. Let's hope I don't mess this up for you. I'm going to blast through some of my uh, things to find the one for you. It's not this one. <laughs> it's this one. This is the recipe that I want you to help me with. And you're going to guess. And I love guesses. And I especially love funny and bad guesses. And we're actually going to start at number six. And this, according to Google's Project Aristotle, was the number one factor, number six, the number one factor in creating a high performance teams. And you could Google it so fast, you'd get there. But anyone know what the number one factor in creating a high performance teams is? Something about atmosphere, creating a, some, something about the environment or the atmosphere? Uh, I like environment. I actually, environment is the last thing I put in there in my work, in my recipe of it. Uh, very good, Rosalie. Anyone, anyone else have a trusting environment? That's very close to it. 
safe? Ah, uh, yes. Who said safe? I, I looked at the big chat. Zita. Oh, I said it. It was Zita. Zita. Okay, great. Say, uh, create a safe environment. Now, Google's Project Aristotle really says it a little different. It's really create a psychologically safe environment. Make it psychologically safe. And what they mean by that, that doesn't mean it's a kumbaya environment. Everyone gets along. No one, we, it's super safe, bubble. Everyone's bubble wrapped and you can't say certain things. It's not that kind of environment. They actually, ideas get bloody in that environment. People don't. Ideas get bloodied in a psychologically safe environment, but people don't. So how can you create that you know, environment where ideas, everyone can share their idea, but people don't get attacked. And people need to be sometimes retrained in that because like when I felt like I was a failure out here that made me a failure in here, um, that a lot of people, if they have an idea that gets attacked, they actually feel like them, th themselves as a being are being attacked. And it's one of the reasons we have trouble with differing opinions today, all this divided stuff out there because people hold their ideas so tight to them. It's like attached to their body. If you attack their idea, it's like you're ripping away their flesh and it hurts. So how do you create a team where they don't look at it that way? You are not your ideas. You are way more than your ideas. And so I believe you're incredibly powerful and infinitely creative. If you create a safe, and the other way I say create a safe environment, and that's the blank I feel. And I'll show a fully filled in one so you can take a screenshot later if you want to. Create a safe environment. I say organizations, some organizations are concrete organizations and others are net organizations. Some people are concrete and some are net. Some people, you definitely don't want to fail a risk around them because you know you're going to get their critical eyes and, and scorn and criticism. Other people go, great job, Rosalie. Way to go for it, you know, and come on, do it again. And I'll give you the example with speaking. And speaking is one of the biggest things, skills we can boost to improve our communication. I like that. So someone, as you knows, Rosalie is a net. <laughs> if you're on the speaking trapeze, and there's no net below you, are you gonna release and try for that bar if you've never done it before, the second bar? And you miss and you land on the ground and then you're done? If you do, if you're in a net, you get a chance to, to improve your skills, your connecting, your communication skills. You can improve those. And that can be very powerful. Create a safe environment. Number five is dare to blank. Dream. And my improv teacher, Jackie Lowell, the one who wouldn't turn on the air conditioning, um, she's the one who said, this is the secret to success in improv and life. Dare to fail, darts next to the bullseye there. Thank you, Josie, I believe. Dare to fail, uh, dare to try. Yep, very good. Those are bullseyes right next, or darts right next to the bullseye. It is a more graphic word though. To use a much more graphic word. Dare to do, I like that one. I would have been good with dare to do. And when she said it, I personally, you know what I did? I dare to dream. I like, I would have been good with that. When she said it, I said, no, thank you. When she said it, I said, no, thank you. Oh, Eric. <laughs> uh, nicely done, Eric. Dare to suck. That's what it was. It was dare to suck. And when she said it, I had a visceral reaction. It was no, thank you. Because at the time, failure out here, I am the failure. Uh, wrong, I am wrong, suck. I don't want to suck, I want to succeed. Since then, I've done a keynote talk called Dare to Suck. There's empowerment in that when you, when you create a safe environment so you can actually do that. So you need that. Dare to lead, I would have been good with that. I would dare, dare to lol, I love to laugh out loud, Rosie. <laughs> I know, I know what you're laughing at. Uh, let's go up to number one. Number one is the two word basis of improv comedy. Uh, I'm sure there's people out there that know what that is. Two word basis of improv comedy. Say yes is very close. I like that. And maybe some places that is say yes. So I think that's, uh, Tanya, that is probably correct in some areas. Play. I love play. Any other guesses? And you can come off mute and share your guess too. Dare. I like dare. <laughs> All right, people out there, the more you play and activate in this, the more you participate in this, the more you're gonna get out. You know, if you wanna watch me ride the bicycle, you can. Or if you wanna ride the bicycle with me, jump in and play, you're gonna be able to take more home. 
And I'll just say this from a, a learning standpoint, what I get, the more active you get in it, the more you're going to get out of it. So I hope you play it playful out today. Dare to suck as well. Uh, make your mistakes look good. It is, uh, that, yeah, that might be later on. Um, good. Be free. I like be free. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you. If you, and if you, last chance for a guess, try, try. I like try. I love the word try for now. It is yes and. and uh, yeah. Yes and. And there's a, a couple books out there. And there's probably more than a couple books on yes and. I was talking to a CEO of a company the other day. He said, we incorporated yes and. Um, super successful. Uh, they just got bought up for a big, big number uh, because they brought that in and created so much innovation and other things in them. How can you bring yes and into your life? And what it means is this. How do you affirm and add? How can you affirm the situation and add to it, to yes and it? It is powerful to affirm and add to another person. Number two, I share in this way. And we'll test with the emperors and empresses in this room. I think it's the number one skill in leadership, sales, negotiation, and relationships. Number one skill in those areas. Listen. Yes, listen. You uh, Look, everyone's on that track. Uh, <laughs> Shelly, Carlos, Rosalie, or is it Rosalia or Ro Rosa Rosalia? But that's what it's all Rosalia. Good. Sorry about that. Rosalia. Let me keep correct me if I get it wrong. Rosalia. And empathy would definitely boost your listening skills. So let me test with the emperors and empresses out there. Give me a thumbs up in the and on either on camera or on your reaction button if you would agree that listening is the number one skill in leadership, sales, negotiation, and relationships. I'm seeing thumbs popping up all over the place. Okay, so most of the emperors and empresses agree. And when I'm in rooms, 90 plus percentage of the audience in person agree when I'd share. All right, let's jump to number three. This is the magic blank. And all this whole recipe is a connection recipe. This whole recipe, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, is the magic blank. It is, will take your listening to another level. And we've got uh, empathy, definitely will do that. Um, and I know that was anyone else guessing what would take your listening to another level? Eye contact. Eye contact, yes. Rosalia, yeah. Eye contact will definitely take your listening to another level. Q tips, <laughs> yes. Eric, finally. Yes. <laughs> Q-tips does help getting that earwax out of there so you can hear better. Yeah, thank you for that and getting me to laugh and react. Um, anyone else have a, something? Don't don't fake listening. That doesn't work either. That's not good. Active listening. Yes, active listening takes your listening to another level. And oftentimes because you think you've heard what they said, right? How many times have people, I, get, I totally get you. Then you say it back and they go, you totally don't get me. Either I'm messing up the way I'm saying it or you are really hearing me um, differently. All right, anyone, not talk, Shelly, genius. Who's the genius of Shelly out there? Not talking, absolutely, that really does help. It's funny, and it helps with, in terms of listening. Anything else? No judgment. Who, who's with, is it Josie? Who's with Josie on this one? I'm with Josie on this one. I'm really with Josie on this one, no judgment. The more judgment you can pull out of it, and really, jo uh, Josie's really hitting towards the answer that I'm looking for. That's a magic blank that brings joy and fun to your life. Be nice helps too. Yeah. Well, Leonardo, thank you so much for being here. Um, I appreciate anyone that does work in um, a second language because I don't think I could have. Because that, when I was wrong, I was wrong. I made so many mistakes speaking in a second language. So thank you for that. And thank you for being here. Uh, the second, be empathetic does help. Definitely boost your listening skills. I'm going to give it to you unless, as, as, as Rosalia typing it in the chat. Mirror, mirroring helps too, yeah. Here it is. Here's the magic. Here's what brought magic to my speaking. Here's what took me from fearful speaking to a speaker that has a ton of fun. Being present. Be present with the person you're listening to. Be, pre be even present for a person. Give me a, give me a thumbs up or a reaction or heart or whatever. If you say being present is a gift to the person you're listening to. All right. Popping, popping thumbs. Though the rest of the people don't think it's a gift. <laughs> um, for, and uh, here, give me a heart. 
if you think being present actually is a gift to yourself as well. Give me a heart if you think being present is actually a gift to yourself as well. Thank you for those hearts. And for all those robotic people out there, you, you scare me if you don't put your heart up. I'm afraid of all of you out there, you heartless individual. I'm, I'm sure you have big hearts. I'm just playing with you. Uh, number So being present is powerful. And, and here's why it is. Fear, most fear, most modern fears exist in the future and projecting negative consequences out in the future. Being present is like the sun coming up and water vapor in the air is fear. And the more the sun, more you're present, the more sun comes out and that water vapor starts to disappear. So the more present you are, the more magic happens. It's what made this moment a ton of fun for me. When in the past, my favorite part of speaking was after I spoke, I thought I did okay. I wasn't beating myself up too badly and I got to sit down. <laughs> that was my favorite point in the past. Now it's during the moment, being present. Make your blank look blank is also a huge key to this recipe. Also feels good to do. Perfect for funny guesses. And it's not make your face look interested. <laughs> it's not make your underwear look clean. It's none of those. What is it, people? I know someone, if, if you're full engaged, someone's going to get right. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, Shelly. Make your ass look small. I think some people go the other way. Make your ass look big. You know, either way. Um, but I love it. I laugh at it. Th so thank you for that, Shelly. For all those, everyone should have, have an answer to this because you're daring to suck now. You've embraced that. <laughs> uh, words, mistakes, make your mistakes look good. I like that, Phil. Make your boss look bad, <laughs> Rosalie. Oh, I like that. I'm laughing. The, the same thing happens to me. I hope that one day. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Words valuable. I mean, I like that, Josie. Um, it's almost the opposite of what Rosalia put in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost the exact opposite. So someone, come on, someone get it right. Someone be playing full out here. Yes. Where? Where is that? Josie, was that Josie? Yes, Josie. Make your people look good. Wow. Yeah, make your people look good. And who are your people? You are my people today. And I'll tell you what, the more you play full out today, the more you're gonna have fun with it. I know you played full out and it's probably some other sessions, but the more you play at full out, even if you're off camera, the more value you're gonna get from this. You can, here's what I get about life. Most people know, and I'll say it this way. Most people know that failure leads to success. Who knows? Put a Y in the chat or put your thumbs up if you know failure leads to success. Ah, seeing, seeing some popping up. So here, does anyone heard of, uh, and here's why I want to get to it. Most people don't own it, and I did not own it either. Most people do not own that, and they don't bring it into their life. Has anyone heard of Sarah Blakely here? Sarah Blakely? A couple, uh, Zeta has, okay. See, to come off mute and share who Sarah Blakely is. No, okay. <laughs> I will tell you. I will tell you who Sarah Blakely is. She is the billionaire founder of Spanx. And she attributes this one ritual to her success in business. One ritual. I mean, there's other things that contributed to this one main ritual that her dad did with her around the dining room table. Does anyone know what that is? Does it make her speak about things like i know the kennedys used to pull out a quote and talk about the quote for it, something like that she okay. they meant speak about something specific what was your best failure of the day they actually were a success if they failed if they failed at failing they were a failure <laughs> so what they created the ritual to get comfortable with failing so that she would she didn't mind failing most people most people, it's here's the hard thing. Even if you're in a net organization, unfortunately for most people, it's concrete up here in your own brain. You're hard on yourself, just like I was hard on myself. Even if you're in a net organization around a net person, you're hard on yourself or incredibly hard on ourselves. All right, so Sir Blakely is awesome in that ritual. How can you bring rituals in your life? Dare to suck, improv. And let me tell the, the other thing, importance of improv. 
Anyone got their script today? Anyone got their script to know their next line? Anyone out there got their script and know their next line? <laughs> I don't think you do. Um, life is improv. This is just a recipe to play it in a different way. And let me fill in the blanks now. And you're, who are your people again? Your people are this room. Your people are your family, your friends, your significant other, your kids, your spouse, your uh, coworkers, your clients, your customers, your students, your teachers, people. They're the people you're in front of. Yes, get comfortable. And it's tough to get used to it. And it took me a while, Shelly. It took me a while to get comfortable failing. It, it was not an overnight process at all. And I'll share that in a brief story and a game we play. And here's the filled in the blank version of it. Yes, and listen, be present, make your people look great, dare to suck, create a safe environment. When I talk to leaders like I did yesterday in CEOs, I ask them how many, would this recipe increase, increase engagement in or, your organization? Yes. Would it increase retention of best people? Yes. Would it, would it improve recruitment? Yes. Would it increase innovation? Yes. Would it increase the productivity or the performance of the people in the organization? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and all those things that adds to it in that way. Now, you can take a screenshot of that as if you want as well. And I'll say this. Um, I encourage you to play with it in this different ways. And let me ask you this question. How many of you would like people in your life to yes and you, listen to you, be present with you, make you look great? Give me a thumbs up if you'd like a couple people. Give me two thumbs up if you'd like a lot of people. Yes. Uh, thank you for that in the chat, Shelly. Yes. All right. And here's the thing. How many of those people in your life do you think now would like you to do that for them? To yes and them, listen to them, be present with them, make them look great. Give me one thumb if it's just a couple people in your life would love for you to do that. Give me two if it's a lot. Thank you for that. See that. Thank you for that, Rosalia. Uh, so yes, thank you, Matt. Um, got a new new person on camera here. Got to check your name out. Thank you, Renee. I appreciate it. Uh, so there's power in this. And here's the cool thing about this recipe. Everyone can do it. I came into this recipe as a no, but kind of guy. <laughs> Meaning I have a but, but I would say no, but all the time. I thought I was actually my delusion was I thought I was actually serving the situation. That was my delusion. When I was actually disconnecting constantly, going back to my compass question, am I connecting or am I disconnecting? And I was constantly disconnecting. Lucky, did you have a comment you wanted to add there? I saw you come off mute. Maybe that's a mistake, okay. So I was constantly disconnecting when I actually thought I was connecting. Yes and is powerfully connecting. Let me ask someone, if someone listens to you, is it a gift? It's a gift if someone listens. Yeah, thank you for that, Renee. And thank you for the hearts, Rosalie. Thank you for the thumbs up all over the place. Um, I appreciate it, Nassim. Uh, all right. And here's the thing. Being present when someone's listening to you is an even a bigger gift, isn't it? And when you, yeah, thank you, Renee. Absolutely. When you practice and play with this recipe for yourself, it feels good to do all these things. I started to get hooked on the good feeling of doing this. And improv created a safe environment where I could actually do this. I eventually embraced Dare to Suck, not in the beginning. And let's, let's jump in and play a game like right now. Ask me a question you think I'd have to say no to. Ask me a question you think I'd have to say no. I'm daring to suck because I don't know what questions you might ask. What is a question you think I would have to say no to? Take your, can you take your shirt off? Yes, I can take it off. And I will write. No, you won't. What? what? You don't want me to do now? You said you wanted me to. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that, Rosalia. All right. Any other questions you think I'd have to say no to? And you will see a pat. The more you ask me, the bigger pattern you will see. You can type them in the chat if you don't want to come on camera. You can take off your little mute button and say your question. And what, is, what does number five say again? What does that say? Dare, dare to suck, ask a question. There's no, no bad questions here. I'll either say yes or no or somewhere in between. 
Oh, can you read without your glasses? Uh, yes, I can read without my glasses, just not as good. <laughs> nice question, Nassim, very good. Can you buy me sushi on Uber Eats right now? Uh, yes, I can. That would also distract from a lot of other people. Can you speak French? We. Oui? <laughs> Great question. Great question. Now you're getting me to laugh. I love these questions. More, please. And Spanish. See? <laughs> See? <laughs> All right. I love it. Any other questions you think I'd have to say no to? And thank you for that. What's your biggest failure you didn't want to talk about? Yes. <laughs> oh, I've had lots of failures. And I'm actually good talking about most of them now. Not in the past, because if I failed, I was a failure. Now I'm not those things. I can learn from those things. All right, I'm going to give you, can you sing a song from a Disney movie? Let it go, let it go. <laughs> yes, I can. Not very well, though. How, how do you, how do, how to do step five? Oh, that's a good question. Yes. Um, can you give up public speaking? Yes, I can give it up. Will I? That's another question. Can you eat a full spoon of wasabi? Yes, in an emergency room. <laughs> Have you been to Indonesia? Yes, virtually. I've been virtually there. <laughs> Not in person, but I want to be there in person. Uh, and so they're great questions. Finally, we get enough questions so you get a pattern here. And what I want to say is this, here's the power of yes and connecting. And I want to just briefly give it to you. And did you have a, I saw you come on camera. Did you have a question you wanted to ask? I love, don't stop if you got a good one. I'm sorry, it's my kid. What was that? It's my kid, sorry. Oh, <laughs> okay. I say yes to your kids. Yes, kids. Thank you. Coming on camera. Okay, here is the, uh, can you say yes to a human being, but no to the request? And you say, and I think you can. Rosalie is shaking her head yes with me too. And here's how I'll give you an idea. Um, one father, when I played this game in person, said, you can't say yes to this, Chris. My son just turned 16. He has a drinking problem and he just got his driver's license. And he wants the car keys on a Friday night. You can't say yes to that. And I said this, son, I know how fun it would be to take the car out on a Friday night. I hope you know how much I care about you. And I know you care about other people and would hate to hurt anyone. Some 16 year olds would not be happy with that answer. <laughs> they would not be good with that answer at all. But what it is, is not saying no, 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 which is very disconnecting. And a couple of psychologists actually said no was the most dangerous word in the world. And how, here's how they came up with that idea. They put people in an fMRI scanner and just flashed the word no. And about a dozen stress-producing chemicals were produced in the body that sent people into fight, bam, flight, or freeze. And when you're in that, the, the blood goes from the thinking part of your brain to the primitive alligator brain, and you're, it's hard to make nuanced responses from there because you're just trying to protect your safety. People react to no differently. And, and I want to be clear on this. There are some places you want to say no really fast and stop a situation if you can. You might even want to induce a little fear with your no to get someone to stop. But can you find ways to say yes and more often? A, when I zoomed over to Switzerland the other day, uh, there was a Swiss CEO that said, hey, that's a lot of fun, Chris. I love your answers to that. It made me laugh. But how do you really use this stuff? And if someone has a question that they say no to a lot, please come in and ask me and I'll give you my version of what I would say, at least in this moment. And here was my answer to him. He shared this very fast scenario with not a lot of details. And one of it, he said, I had an employee, we'll call her Samantha, came up to me and said, hey, can we put the company information on this plastic bag? And all the CEO thought was cost, effort. And he said, no, we can't do it. That was it. And I said, what if you did this instead? Samantha, I love that you think about ways where we can improve the company. Thank you for doing that. Please keep bringing ideas like that to me um, when you have them. But with this particular idea, I see these three things getting in the way. And she might go, I've already thought of those three things. 
this, this, and this. And he goes, wow, let's do it then. Or maybe she goes, oh, I haven't thought about those three things or I haven't thought about that one. Let me think more about it. So you affirmed the human being. You yesed and the human being. You might have said no to the request, but you yes and the human being. And would you rather be yes and as a human being or just your request? Personally, yes and me as a person first. I think it's powerful. All right, I'll give you another connection recipe from a, a CEO friend of mine. It's called the LUV recipe. Listen, and it's based on ancient wisdom. Listen, understand, validate. Listen, understand, and validate. That's like giving someone a hot fudge sundae. The cherry on the top is the agreement. Or if you don't get the hot fudge sundae reference, it's your favorite dessert with maybe a little whipped cream on top. Whatever it is, the, it feels good to be listened to, understood, and validated. That feels good just on its own. The agreement is nice, but even not necessary when you feel fully understood. That's a powerful thing. Now, I've shared the recipe with improv with you. And that, that my particular version of the recipe. Now, yes, and is common in pretty much everyone. Listen, uh, I don't know if a lot of them talk about being present, but improv brings you present. Make your people look great. Improv, that's my particular line, and I might change it down the road. It's really about setting up people to succeed. You, you support your partner's offer, whatever it is. You, if they think they're falling, they've dared, and they've sucked, and they're falling, and they think they're going to go off the edge, and all of a sudden, someone jumps out there and picks them up in this cool way. And it creates this magical moment where you feel like you've done trust fall, verbal trust fall after trust fall on stage. We go, man, I can trust these people. It feels so good. That's why you create that safe environment so that people can take risks. How to get someone you love and their love of no. How do you get, okay, to end, oh, to end their, it's not my eyeglasses, end their love of no. <laughs> that can be tough. That can be tough to get someone to do something else. Um, and let me see if I can pronounce your name correctly. Is it Cirque? Cirque? Close? <laughs> okay, Cirque. Um, it's, that is a great question. One, but here's what I get to. I've spent a lot of my life trying to get other people to make do things so I could be happy. What I get is you change you and everyone around you will actually change. And the only person you can control is yourself. I love this quote from Byron Katie. When you argue with reality, you only lose 100% of the time. And I've argued with reality circles so much. What I would suggest, I mean, you can point it out to them or even have someone else point it out to them if they're willing to see it. What I would consider actually yourself is start embracing this recipe a little bit more. You might even be transparent with it. Hey, I'm gonna attempt to embrace this recipe. Will you support me? in embracing this. When they start to see you do it, you can covertly play improv with people all over the place. Um, I'll, I'll share a super fast story and then we'll jump into a quick game. Is that it, I work with Alzheimer's San Diego with caregivers with this particular recipe. And one granddaughter in the room, her, her grandmother she takes care of has Lewy body syndrome. She has visual hallucinations. She sees things and people that are not there. And they constantly fought about it. Grandma, there's no people in my car. There's no one outside. Sometimes she'd take her grandmother out there. They'd clash. No, 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 no. And then she learned, you know, the yes and from improv, just the yes and part of it. And what she did is one day they were looking out, watching, washing dishes, looking out the kitchen window. And the grandmother said, oh my gosh, there's a gorilla in your car. And she was really concerned. And the granddaughter goes, yeah, that's my boyfriend. <laughs> and the grandmother looked back here, what? And she goes, he likes to wear gorilla costumes, grandma. And, and for some reason, instead of keep questioning, they both started to laugh and connect. They both started to laugh and connect. And uh, I realize I haven't even given you the second compass question. Here's the second question, compass question that really helped me in a struggling part of my life with my daughter, what would love do? What would love do? And that can point oftentimes to what's most important in the situation because my logical mind got in the way of love so many times. I failed so many times when it comes to that. I wanted to do so many things. And then I asked that question, 
Love definitely wouldn't do that, Chris, but we'll love you even if you do that. You know, so that, that can be very powerful. Um, I, I get by the audience interaction here right now that I, I can't probably do a partner exercise because I see so many. If you want to do a partner exercise, I need at least 20 of you to come on camera right now and we can play that game. And if you don't, that's okay. There's a couple of games we can play without the partner exercise in the, the Zoom room. And we're going to do the one exercise right now, I think, then, to the was the first game in my first, no, last game in my first day of improv that almost was my last because I was so critical of myself. I was playing the game and I thought, if I can't come up with one simple answer, maybe I'm not meant to do improv. And what I get is I'm infinitely creative. I know you are as well. You might not have worked on the muscle as much lately. So here's the game. It's called Pass the Object. And Jackie Lowell gave us a white toilet brush a group of about 15 us. We were standing outside that same community center where I was afraid to, uh, where I put the ice pack down my pants. Uh, the, the white toilet brush, people were turning it into cool things. Now she said it was new. It looked new. It did not have a tag on it though. It looked new though. People are, are a butterfly net. I could see the butterfly net they created with it. A tennis racket, a badminton racket. They were doing cool things. And then, um, it's coming to me and I'm in the fear breathing zone, very breathing. My vision is tunneling down because my mind is clean, completely blank, except saying, if you can't think of one thing, maybe you're not meant to do improv. And that kept getting closer and closer and closer. And all of a sudden I had something, canoe paddle. <laughs> I'm gonna survive this game with a canoe paddle. And then the person right next to me says canoe paddle. <laughs> And that big oh no came on my face. I had the toilet brush. Nothing, 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 nothing. All of a sudden, I was brushing my teeth with a toilet brush. And I survived that game. And I would come back again and again and again. And I learned one really important thing from there. You got to have two things. <laughs> and I did that. So I want you to know me. I did that for the longest time. I truly thought that might be my last day of improv. I truly did come up with two things probably for over a year. And still that I could feel that safety net underneath me. I could see that few moments I dared to suck. And here's what happened. That moment of number three, being present, more and more of those happened. And when I felt that I could trust it, I started to trust it. And even if I missed, there was that safety net underneath me. Being present felt like magic. If you want to better connect, if, you're, if this group wants to build your communication and connection skills, this is a magical recipe for it. Even if you just take one piece of the puzzle, the dare to suck, people will be wild by you. They go, wow, I couldn't do that. They'll be wild and they want to come out. How did you do that? That'll bring people to you. Creating a safe environment, people want to feel safe. If you just master that one area, people will go, oh my gosh, I just feel great around Rosalia. I just feel awesome around her. She makes me feel so good and safe. Make your people look great. That's assist in basketball or hockey. It's setting up other people to succeed, uh, making your people look great. Everyone wants to be around someone that sets you up to look good or that chips in and plays well with you. Being present, magical gift for yourself and the people you're with. They'll go, oh my gosh, there's something about that human being that I love to be around. There's just something about them. And have you ever seen at a party and you said, oh my gosh, they're such a great conversationalist. And later they said, I didn't, I barely said a word. I just asked questions and listened. <laughs> if you just ask questions and are a really good listener, that's incredibly connecting. And these skills, you mean, you might heard the phrase, it's not what you know, it's who you know uh, for success. I add, it's who you know and how much they love you and how skilled you are in a particular area. Yes, and so there's magic in this whole thing. So I want you to play uh, Pass the Object with me. Grab a pen if you have it. Feel free to um, get on camera. You don't have to. You don't have to play. You don't have to expand your day even more. You could just take all this wisdom in and, and then forget it tomorrow. <laughs> or get it blurred with all these other brilliant things you've done. I know I'm an experiential trainer. I want people to feel stuff because I get when I've read hundreds and hundreds of good books. And I kept saying, this is going to change me. It didn't until I started to teach it, feel it, tell stories about it, repeat it over and over again, or get myself to experience experiences. I'm giving you the chance to play with this. We're, I'm going to turn this pen into two different things and then voluntarily only, 
Here we go. Sound effects optional. Laser one. That is my brilliant. Yeah, that's my brilliant lightsaber. I can feel the Jedi force running powerfully through my body. Here's another simple one. Q-tip was said earlier. Q-tip. <laughs> All right. So come on, on camera. Show me what you're going to do with your pen. Move your pen in a direction. Feel free to dare to suck. And we'll guess what you're doing with your pen. All right. Eric's ready. Eric. <laughs> yes. Is that, what is that? A, a clarinet or piccolo or? Flute. Flute. Recorder? <laughs> Tell us what it is, Eric. No bow. Oh, bow. No yeah. bow. <laughs> I love that you made us go for that. Great job, Eric. And did you play the oboe? I used to. Yeah, you yeah, it felt like you had actually real skills in what you did. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. And, and this this actually goes to your speaking communication skill this game in many ways. Josie, you look ready. Uh, it's a back scratcher, of course, and we all need one of those. Very, very nice. No, no bad answers here. Yes, Renee. What it's you are? It is a. Uh, what is it? It's a EKG. <laughs> what is it, Renee? Just painting. <laughs> oh, painting! Yeah, brilliant. Very nice. Anyone else? Uh, is it a, teeth, a toothbrush, Shrek? Okay. And then, uh, Rosalia, it is your uh, eyelash. Mascara, uh, yes. Mascara. All right. Any of the people on camera can do another one or someone else can come on. I tell you, those people that have played so far, would you encourage the others to play? Yeah. Hi, Hi Shelly. Way to jump in. Of course. I love the flair that you did that with too, <laughs> Shelly. Very nice. I don't even smoke. <laughs> I know, but I'll tell you what. I pretend smoking. Anyone that wants to play with me can do this. Pretend smoking. <sighs> Feels good. <laughs> Take a deep, deep drag on that. I encourage you all to be playful. All right, we got another one. Thank you for coming on camera. It's then is Ison. It's then. Ickton, and are you going to stab me, Ickton? No, this is a flashlight. Oh, like the flashlight, like yeah. a, a, Sorry. Oh, I was a, I was a little nervous there. <laughs> no, no. You made me nervous. Anyone else want to play? You, and for those not on camera, you can hear the laughter. I encourage you to get on and play so you can feel that. I encourage you to be more playful in life. And I say it this way. When some people watch me play basketball not so long ago, they go, is that guy having any fun? I was pretty serious on the court, but I was having fun, but I could have more fun because I was really critical of myself. Um, I hope you choose to have more fun. I hope you choose to play with this recipe. Um, it is phenomenal to play with. And in this game, there's so many aspects. It boosts your creativity. It boosts your ability to use body language. Throw the dart next to bullseye. Playfulness erases fear. It does all those things in a powerful way. This recipe, you'll, if you choose to play with it, you'll feel good playing with it. And I'm very much a work in progress. I know from where I went to where, where, wherever you are now, you can do this too. Um, I know we're ticking at that time, I think. And I, I, oh, are, are we over that time? No, right about that time. Yeah, right about that time. Um, I love what I get to do. And I want you to do this. For those on camera, please stand camera. And this is a special one. Anyone want a camera and come on and experience? This is a new game. I've never done it before or experience. And when I say be, you're going to go into being your best beingness you can, be as present as you can. When I say be, you be as present as you can. When I say playful, you give me your best embodiment of playfulness. So here we're, here we're going to go. For any one chance to come on camera, or you can do it off camera as well. And if you're off camera, I encourage you to still do it. If you're walk, watching this later, do it. Okay, here we go. Be playful. <laughs> here we go again. We got another chance on it. Here we go again. Be. Take a deep breath with that B. Be. be playful. <laughs> yes! Yes! One more time. Here we go. Here we go. Be playful. 
<laughs> Nicely done, people. It's an honor to be here with you and play with you. My name is Chris Nielsen. You can find me at chrisnielsen.com. You can email me at chris at chrisnielsen.com. Uh, as a professional speaker, um, if you want to connect with me in that way, if you want to improve your own communication skills that way, I'll just share super briefly what I did for myself. I created a group called Speaker Skills Plus, which is designed a playful environment of inevitable success where we play speaking games to improve our speaking skills. And I did that for me because I was a procrastinator. Now I don't procrastinate anymore. I playfully grow my speaking skills. If you want a free golden ticket to that, put your email in the chat and I'll send you a golden ticket. Free is that, no strings attached. It does cost a little bit if you eventually join. You can come a couple times free, get the experience, get some games you can play on your own. I totally love what I get to do. If you invite me to another cool location, I would love to play with you or play with your company or organization and bring this magical recipe of yes and listen, be present, make other people look great and dare to suck in a safe environment to that organization. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much for being here. And for those of you who, those of you who played, thank you. And for those of you who didn't play, don't feel bad. And I think that goes along with Chris's message. This takes practice. And I too, like Chris, used to be terrified of public speaking. And now you can't get me to shut up as I'm, I'm sure you've seen over the last few days. So don't be hard on yourself. And I think that's all aligned with what Chris was saying. Chris, thank you. That was fun. That was entertaining. And behind all that fun and entertainment, of course, is the real seriousness of how you really can improve your communications and be there for yourself and others. I, I thank you so much for being with us on a Saturday. And I hope to be working with you again. It was a real pleasure. And everyone, we have a few sessions left for Power Skills. Hope to see you there. If not, thank you for being part of Power Skills um, for this iteration. We hope to see you next time. Whatever you're all doing for the rest of the day, enjoy it. Rosalie, I wanted to add to that. Thank you so much for saying that. Please don't be hard on yourself if you didn't play. Um, you know, be as kind to yourself as you possibly can be. Be super nice. No shame, blame, or guilt. Just notice what it was for you. And I hope you do play more. Thank you so I much. I love that, Chris. Yes. Thank you. Bye, everyone.